Yeah. So this is interesting, but ultimately, I didn't teach you anything new. It's just the application of something that you already knew. Right? And I promise that um, uh, we can use this to figure out that there's a missing uh, law of electromagnetism. So let me show you a slightly different version of this effect. So that slightly different version looks like this. Hole is sitting there. It's not moving. And what I'm going to do is, um, instead of moving the coil, I'm going to move the magnet. So let me put it on a stick so that it's easier to move. Um, I'm going to stick the magnet either in or out. So you see voltage there, right? Now, would you have expected to see that voltage? Yeah, kind of. You could have expected it. If you, how many here are familiar with the principle of relativity? Kind of when you know things. The, it's the relative motion that matters, not absolute motion. So the question of when you look at these two approaching each other, question of which is stationary. That's a uh, academic question. That's a question without a physical meaning. Because um, in the reference frame of this uh, magnet, it's the coil that's moving. That's what you saw before. But imagine you are the observer on the coil. Then it's the magnet that's moving. So think, considering the principle of relativity, you could have theoretically expected the effect that you are seeing experimentally there now. When you have this magnet that's moving, that generates voltage. But the coil itself is moving. Now, this is what I want you to look at. Um, look at all the laws of physics that you know. So this time, there's, an, um, there's no wire that has any kind of velocity. Here, v velocity is zero. The only thing that has velocity is the magnet, but I'm not really looking at the force on the magnet. I'm looking at the force on the things inside the wire. So velocity is zero for whatever it is you are looking at. And you want to get something that's close to motional EMF. So as you look at this, is there anything here that says if you have a changing magnet? So you know, when I move this up and down, this is what it does. It changes the magnetic field. So when I move this magnet around, this is what I'm doing. You know, closer to the magnet, magnetic field is stronger. Farther from the magnet, magnetic field is weaker. So as I move the magnet up and down, I'm changing the strength of magnetic field at the location of this coil. Right? So the question comes down to, um, is there anything in our law of physics that says when the magnetic field changes, there must be voltage? Right now, there isn't, right? But so this is where you have to assume that something like Faraday's law exists. Because other than the fact that you see an experiment, you also can reason it through. That um, you consider this picture, stationary magnet and moving coil. And that has to be physically equivalent to stationary coil and moving magnet. And when you take the laws of electromagnetism as it's written here, those two are not uh, they are not symmetric. So when you look at moving coil, something interesting should happen. But when you look at moving magnet, well, nothing interesting should happen when your physical intuition says that both of those are the same physical picture. In fact, if you want to make it symmetric, they can be moving towards each other. Yeah? So this is the Faraday's law, which resolves this paradox which uh, makes laws of electricity and magnetism consistent with what we expect and what we see in experiment. So let me write down for this law. It says, um, it actually looks quite similar to Ampere's law, which kind of makes sense because it's a law that relates to the voltage. So this is what Faraday's law says. The line integral of electric field E dot dl, and this line integral is around the closed loop. So when you do a line integral around the closed loop, so uh, do you guys remember what kind of geometric object a closed loop also defines? Excuse me. What kind of geometric object does a closed loop also define? Like if you have a closed loop, 
All right, great, you have a closed loop, but you have one other geometric object from this. Surface that's uh, uh, enclosed by this loop, right? So once you have a surface, then you can define a flux, right? So that's how we did it for electric flux here. So we can do the same thing for magnetic field. So it, with this loop that we have for, um, call it Faraday's loop, I think we still call it Ampere, whatever. With this closed loop, you can define a surface. So you can look at magnetic field going through the surface and calculate the magnetic flux. So, um, um, so let me just write down that definition of magnetic flux. So the magnetic flux, um, we use this symbol, uh, capital phi subscript B. All this means is it's uh, the uh, surface integral of B dot dA over some surface. It doesn't have to be um, closed, it can be open. If it's a closed surface, then it's like the Gaussian surface that we are using. If it's open surface, then it's uh, like the open surface that's bounded by this loop. Yeah. So what, um, what Faraday's law says is that there's a relationship between this line integral of electric field and this uh, magnetic flux uh, coming from the magnetic field. And it's not just, uh, um, it's a different type of relationship than what you have seen before. So you know, so right now there's a magnetic flux going through the loops of this uh, wire. But you don't see any voltage there, right? You only see the voltage when the magnetic flux changes. So here, this voltage is going to be related to magnetic flux this way, minus the rate of change of the magnetic flux. So there's a time derivative here. So far, you know, in specifying all of this, there wasn't really time derivative. I guess you could have put in some time derivative with the current, but we didn't. <laughs> um, um, so this is what uh, this is Faraday's law. Um, so I guess I made the box too big. So this is Faraday's law, and Faraday's law, and this is what. Uh, makes this picture consistent, that whether the magnet is the one doing the moving or the coil is the one doing the moving, the effect of either happening is the same. 